I guess around late July, we got wind that Netanyahu was coming. Some people were like, there's no way that we can allow this war criminal on campus. Most of the Palestinians, and even most of the lefties, were totally against it, and people were really pissed off. You know damn well they're not going to stop me or anyone else from speaking. This is awesome. Get rid of the card. Justice is all in on the card. Justice. I tell you what. Justice is executed. Justice is executed. Justice is executed. Justice is action. Okay, Netanyahu is coming. We were like, we're going to shut him down. He can't come on our campus. Okay, let's go. made it down to the escalators. And from there, we had determined to stay where we were until it was canceled. At first, when we were planning on bringing in Netanyahu, I think someone said to me, at Concordia, is it gonna be okay? And I thought, definitely, it's Montreal. People can yell at you, people can heckle, people, but Never in a million years would I have thought there'd be a riot. <laughs> Security had set up so that people trying to get in with tickets I had to go through a crowd of protesters. And I started speaking to people to find out what was going on. They said, Noah, this person was spitting on me. At some point, Samer goes down to the front, and Samer tries to just tries to just march through with his hands up just to occupy the lobby. And people come with him, and the police start beating him back really harshly. I wanted to just get in their way so they could stop beating people, and a cop just comes up, grabs me, and and pulls me off, and then a second cop joins him, and then a third cop and a fourth cop, and they just sort of try and drag me to the ground. And meanwhile, I'm swearing at them and spitting in their face, as was uh, later broadcast for the world, including my grandmother, to uh, see. At the request of both Mr. Netanyahu's own security and uh, the police, uh, this, uh, he will not come here for the election. However, Jewish pride. We came here to the viper's nest of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel hatred. All of a sudden, they shut the doors. I spoke to my sister Naomi. She said, people are really scared. There's something outside that we've never been exposed to before. I said, there's, there's, there's hatred. People hate us. People hate us. Hatred. Venom coming out of their eyes. The feeling was that we had lost. They've won. It's been a success. It's great. You know, we take complete credit for this. I think it's a victory. I'm, I'm, I'm very, 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 very happy. Like very happy. It was a really big event that actually hasn't happened before on a school campus, so it made international headlines. That was on CNN, that was on uh, Al Jazeera, that was everywhere. And I just knew that in one day, the breaking of that one window would uh, dictate the terms under which I'd be playing out this school year.
Every culture that you can think of has some sort of representation at Concordia. We happen to have a very strong and vocal Arab population, and within it, a large number of Palestinian students. Coupled with the fact that at Concordia, you also have a very strong and large um, activist community. And since the Israel-Palestine conflict really affects our lives here in Canada, as we're learning now, especially in the aftermath of September 11th, what happens in the, in the Middle East can really affect us here now. Uh, you know, there's been this natural alliance formed between pro-Palestinian um, students, uh, you know, Arab students, and lefties. That said, I have found myself feeling in the middle at, at times this year, when I feel as if my side, the pro-Palestinian side, is making decisions that I, that I don't agree with. Not this. Okay, then watch this. Is, this is awesome. Like, so, for example, I was really opposed to the fact that people that are good friends and, and comrades wanted to shut down Netanyahu's right to speak. Have you seen the video from inside? No, I Aaron? have. I have. Yeah, it's disgusting. No, I know. And also, you know what? I thought this for a long time until until <laughs> until fucking Samra yeah. Samra admitted to me. He said like he said yes. Like uh, welcome, welcome uh, to the viper's nest. No, I, that. I'm trying yeah, to explain yeah. here. At Indian, Samra said yes. I was Canadian offered ten Jew, tickets. Sorry, Shadi. 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 I'm just serious. Okay. The Rainbow Coalition. The Rainbow <laughs> Coalition. <laughs> the, but uh, people have said, well, the only reason why I supported Netanyahu's right to free speech is because I'm Jewish and because I have some Zionists sympathies, but it's not true. I support free speech for anybody. Why are you bringing, no, Aaron, why are you bringing all this other no, stuff up? Your free speech argument is a smokescreen. No, it's not a smokescreen, Jay. It is, the way you're using it, because no. we believe in free speech. Okay, so gonna... This has nothing to do with free speech. So even, so... It's the most abstract, no, Jay, abs no, it's the most abstract way of looking at free speech no, and listen. divorcing it from any reality of power dynamics. You shut off a whole area of campus. And then the Arab students are supposed to come onto campus that day and be good Arabs and like put their heads down and say, no, 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 for free no, speech, no, 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 I'm going to no. take my books, I'm going to walk in the building on the side. Yeah, Jay, yeah, I'm no, saying no, that. No, no, really, I'm no, no, I'm not saying you're no, saying no, that. I'm, I'm saying that's better. Jay, Jay, we should have had 10,000 people there. You, you don't listen. It's not like worth arguing with you. It's like, to be fair, it. it's tough to argue with you, man. It's hard to get a word in edge of us. Oh, there's plenty we, of, we can disagree on how we assert There's plenty of ego in the room, man. Over the past few years, there's been a lot of animosity towards the Concordia Student Union and the Arab activists that it's associated with and that it has worked closely with. People say things like the Arab terrorists and the Arab fascists and the Marxist Arabist cabal that runs the Concordia Student Union. And all of these are words that you can find, not just from individuals' mouths, but reported in the press. You know, on the mezzanine where students are like trying to go to classes and come back from classes, you have this like huge argument with people and crowds and people are like, you know, you touched my sweater, no I didn't, yes I did, and blah blah blah. And like this picture says uh, has a caption that says terrorist and they're not they're not terrorists, yes they are terrorists and blah 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 blah. Solving the problem? Apply justice. Five million refugees, they go back. Refugees go back. Live together, one country, all it's one No, no, but, but this is my point. I think that would that would have been a great idea. But considering all the hate that's filled up, uh, I don't, I think you, you can't do that. I think People who don't have relatives who aren't connected with the area, you don't know what it's like. 
when you hear a news, a news piece about no matter who dies, how many people die, where it was, you stay extra alert. You, something stands up. You hope it's not bad. Um, and so that's one thing that unites us. We both know what it's like. Both communities know what it's like when that news piece comes on. This was just minutes after it happened. The bomb exploded at the Hebrew University, killing and maiming students who pass the popular cafeteria every lunch hour. Passions are at the boiling point now as both sides bury their dead. Most are Palestinians. There's always been a tradition of activism at the university, going back to its two founding institutions, for example, at Sir George Williams. Uh, there was a time in the 30s and part of the 40s when uh, uh, if you were Jewish in Montreal and you wanted to go to university and you didn't want to face a quota system at the other universities, you'd apply to Sir George because you were accepted and welcome. Why are the Canadian kids taking up a foreign debate seat? Well, I think one of the things is it isn't foreign. The person who lives here in Montreal, be he, in this particular case, Jewish or Arab, he's somehow, or she's somehow, either directly affected or feels directly affected by this. Just because you're 8,000 kilometers away doesn't really matter anymore. That's what the cooling off period was, to put on hold certain public events that inflamed passions on both sides. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Given the very serious nature of this behavior, the university will be requesting a one-year suspension for Mr. Matty. I'm not worried, like, uh, they have pretty flimsy evidence. Yeah. I think I'll be vindicated, for sure. With Samurai, I can believe that people want to get him, for a racist reason. He's a very articulate, and very, very well-informed spokesperson for the Palestinian cause. The university wants to expel him for six years, and the criminal uh, charges against them, you know, hold, hold the sentence of up to like, you know, something like two years in jail or something. Oh, well, I received a call yesterday from uh, um, a police detective who said that um, he, wants to, he wants to see me in court. He wants to see me in the station, sorry. And um, yeah, and they told me that I, my conditions, I can't be here now. I'm breaking my conditions. <laughs> Karen, going to, Karen, going to study, eh? I gotta study. You get that every day. Hi, uh, this is Samer Lasser from Concordia. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Okay. I wanted to know if this story would be appearing in tomorrow's Globe and Mail because we do have a press release tomorrow. We can debate like the finer points of jurisprudence once you learn Arabic, maybe. Um, but uh, until then, I think you know you should. Uh, you know, respectfully take our word for it. Thank you. Some of the guys yesterday were saying they think that you're anti-Semitic. Um, okay. What, what's, what's your response to that? Well, I, I mean, I have never made any anti-Semitic statements or written anything that can be uh, considered as anti-Semitism. Of course, um, it's a very convenient explanation, right? It's because um, if you're going to be an apologist for Israel and the occupation, you have to deny that there is any Palestinian suffering and therefore any legitimate Palestinian grievances. But you have to furnish another explanation to why Palestinians are revolting. And that, of course, is that Palestinians are simply anti-Semitic. Why else would they revolt? Because they're anti-Semitic, period. And they hate democracy. That's it.
Hello, it's the Jewish Student Union on campus. The center of uh, Jewish activism. Part of a North American Jewish community on campus type program. Israel is a Jewish state, we're a Jewish group, it's close connections. So we support Israel politically and spiritually. Concordia is an interesting place, and coming from where I grew up, I'd never been in a non-Jewish school. Never been in a school with a single non-Jew in my class. But it was sort of a shock, it's like I left a cocoon and went out to the big world. You know, that motto that they have for themselves, a real education for the real world? Booyah, that's what I got, that's what I'm getting. Concordia used to be very, very Jewish. Jews were the immigrants back then, and Concordia was an immigrant school, and now Jews aren't so much immigrants, and now it's, it's Arab Muslim students. Um, there is a strong sense of tribalism. First, tell me how much is a kafia? How much is uh, fifteen dollars? You sell a lot of them? Yeah, yeah, a lot, especially the red ones. There are a lot of Jewish students, many of whom feel that any attack against Israel is anti-Semitic. So it starts looking more and more like constant bickering between uh, Jews and Arabs. And then people start saying, why are they bothering us with this, you know? Okay, in multiculturalism, it's a multiculturalism of um, food and uh, of dress, you know? That's what it's a multiculturalism of. Um, when we want, if I were to say that um, you know, uh, Canada is supporting Israeli human rights abuses. And then people come and complain that I am uh, kind of disrupting the multicultural experiment. Why can't I forget that and leave that at home? And that's not really multiculturalism. No, no, no. We have to come to the point of this. The point is not on the issue of the issue. The issue is that the Arabs are going to be uh, targeted by the Board of Governors. Do you understand? I was born in Scarborough. Although I'm a Canadian citizen, I have the passport, but I'm Palestinian, I don't consider myself anything else. Ben-Gurion said, you know, the old will die and the young will forget. And this is to show that we refuse to forget and that Palestine is our country and that we are going to go back there um, as soon as we get a chance. So I treat, you know, I treat my stay here as an exile, um, nothing more and, you know, nothing less. What about studying? When you study? I don't want, I've effectively dropped my course. You've dropped your one course? Yeah. Well, not officially, but I'm going to. So, now I, it's just me and my work. My wonderful, wonderful work. There's a tension in me between the fact that I'm Jewish and in a struggle, especially at Concordia, my people, my community are sort of like the bad guys, the enemies. Throughout this whole year, I've been thinking a lot about, uh, you know, this sort of struggle going on and my place in it. What caused him to cut? Any idea? Just cut his foot in the light and just didn't pick it My dad is a doctor and a writer. For most of his life, he wrote about political issues, especially about the Israel-Palestine issue. And he still does speak out against Israeli atrocities and, and the Israeli government and so forth. And for that, he's really hated. Like he, you know, he still gets death threats and hate mail. Early, Letters that say, Dear Dr. Mate, the SS should have finished you off. You're worse than the Arab garbage. I was born during the war. 
My grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. My mother and I barely survived 1944, which is the year of the uh, genocide in Hungary. I was the Vancouver youth leader of a Zionist group here. Absolutely. I, my intention was to live in Israel and to make what they call Aliyah, to emigrate and to uh, live in a kibbutz and all that whole idealistic scenario that you grow up with. Part of our training in the Zionist movement was to how to argue with Arab students on campus. I'm talking back in the 60s. And in order to argue with them, I had to find out what their point of view was. And as soon as I started reading their point of view, I began to realize that my view of history had been very narrow and very skewed and very um, isolated from reality. I think there should be a lot more activism on campuses. There should be a lot more debate. There should be a lot more discussion. There should be a lot more controversy. I mean, if at that point in your life you don't get engaged, you don't get impassioned, you don't care about something, one way or the other, you don't put yourself in the forefront of trying to figure out what the world is really all about and trying somehow to come to terms with the injustices in it, then when will you do it, for God's sake? This jihad, the word jihad is an hour. You, you, you have no right to have yeah. these people. I don't care whatever you understand about it. Okay? If, 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 if something's written in the Quran, we can't write it on No, you cannot say we have jihad enough. That means we do, don't have, we have enough of our religion, right? That's not what it means. That's what it means. Okay, you want to debate? Take a coffee for five minutes and then we'll switch the bed. Okay, take a breath. People are beginning to think of Concordia as a sort of microcosm for world geopolitics, and I think that's a real problem. I think that it's become really difficult to step back and look at the situations at our school without viewing it as the center of the world, and we forget about the things that are actually going on outside of our school. The school is being portrayed as Riot University, you know. We're spending so much money on tuition and there's a lot of different uh, situations going on in the world and it basically just seems like in Concordia that there's only two major events, Israel and Palestine, that's it. The struggle that we're involved in at Concordia, on whatever side, okay, <laughs> is, a, uh, is an important struggle to have here, outside of what's happening there. Because I think that as a... As a you know, we often wonder, how did it happen in Germany? How, why did we let the Holocaust happen as an international community? And why did Canada not do anything before about it? And it's a, it's a really important question to ask, you know. Uh, what's our responsibility when something far away happens? Well, I'm not gonna be there. What is this? Volunteers needed for IDF, yeah. so you need volunteers to go into the Israel Defense Forces. Yeah, lots. Yeah. You need lots of them. Yeah. And you're promoting it on Concordia campus. Yeah. Okay. So you have a problem with that? So I think it's going to be held, should be held accountable for this. Can I have a, one of these? The flyer that uh, advertised a program that recruits for the Israeli army really angered a lot of people. You do know there's laws against uh, recruiting for the it's armed forces of a, of a like foreign a power? No, it's a volunteering. We're not recruiting. It's, it's just a program. There's a lot of programs. Here, let me show you. If, they, if these guys it's recruited Jewish. for Hamas or Hezbollah, you'd be screaming blue murder. But just you know, it's it's between an army and... It turns out the SPHR decided to really try and exploit this and make it a media issue. They decided to, to put a spin on it that Hillel was recruiting for the Israeli army. When they were distributing the material, people came up to them and said, look, you know, this is, why are you distributing this? This is not acceptable, because it was offensive. Yeah. I'd like to add 2.5, Secretary of Council position. I am, okay. In other business, I'd like to add an emergency motion resulting from materials that were given out by Halal on November 27th. We found out about this plant ban about 15 minutes before it actually the actual meeting, so there was no due process. They had no time to prepare. The CSU Council suspended Hillel uh, and froze their funding. 
All those in favor? All those opposed? I actually think that the suspension was a really big mistake, and I'm worried about uh, what's going to happen. Motion is carried. You know, what do you do? At some point, you have to sort of step in and be a bit authoritarian about it. You know, you have to say, look, uh, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't get away with continuously saying these things. This is some fan mail. I just got listen to this. You are a pretentious swine. You are full of shit and hate. I do not advocate violence, but the truth is you really deserve to die. You know that if the shoe was on the other foot and the Palestinian group was outlawed on campus by the CSU, your Palestinian brethren would be slashing your throats. Nathan in Montreal. Jerusalem Post is reporting this like, everywhere. Jerusalem Post reporting? Yeah, the fucking UPI, yeah. The United Press Syndicate uh -huh. fucking call this. This is everywhere. Like, you know, people, and, like, no one, even people on our side, like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? Yeah, yeah Like, my dad this morning was like, what the hell? Like, are you. We, is, we deliberately this, put this them in this position. This is a result of the administration not taking no, the Council okay, okay. of Representatives seriously in, in, in this motion. Yes, That's but, why they but didn't before that, this is the result of the Council of Representatives not taking itself seriously and imposing a ban on a group without even letting them respond. That's what this is the result of. And then we again, we go and blame the administration. There's a press okay, conference okay, at 2.30. Okay, 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 we're taking fucking responsibility. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Should we blame them? But this is like, we're not going to get like... So me and Sabine had an agreement that she would lift the uh, suspension. She went down to the press conference, then she said that we're going to keep the suspension and we ended up getting this big argument and uh, I went there and I said, uh, you know, Sabine, please don't do this. And I went back to my office. And I was talking to my dad and I started crying. I was like, this is such a great uh, fucking institution. And we're throwing it down the tubes by trying to be authoritarians. Yeah. And, and, and I can't be a part of it. And he was like, well, you know, why don't you do something about it? I was like, I understand. I'm doing something about it. I'm going to resign. And he said, well, that's not doing something about it. That's just running away from it. And you know what? And you're right. Like, why should I just, like, sit down and be quiet? Uh, can I ask you where Hillel is? Uh, were they invited to be here today? Yeah, we weren't invited. Did you invite them? I just speak? To, no, well, no. How come? Uh, how come? You are bringing uh, supporters of the Palestinian cause, while your role is to represent all the students. In your opinion, doesn't it create a very, very strong uh, case of maybe uh, partiality, while you should be impartial? So if, yeah. I actually wanted to say, I'm also on this executive with Sabina. I'm a vice president here. I wanted to tell the media that not everybody on this executive agrees with this decision. I personally think that we should lift the ban on Halal because I think that they were unfairly banned. And not that, not that I don't agree with what they did. I don't agree with their flyers. I think that they were offensive. But the fact is that they were banned without any form of due process. And I don't think that we should act like authoritarians, even if we think that we're morally right. Blindside people. You can have so a disagreement. We, agreed we always no, no, disagree. No, 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 you do not no, no, blindside no. people. They blindsided me. We no, no. Oh, so it's okay for you to blindside her. Bye. You do not blindside people. All solidarity. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We had a fucking agreement this morning that she went back on. Everyone's very pissed at Aaron. 
what do you I, think he did I wrong? Think, I think he fundamentally like uh, just b bowed to pressure. Uh -huh. From, he was getting a lot of emails and flack and mm -hmm. phone calls, you know, from like angry Zionists. And Aaron sees the Hillel as people to convert, right? People who he wants to win over, you know, they're part of his community. And he wants to win them over and he thinks that doing things of this sort are just going to alienate them further and entrench them more into the extremist Zionist camp. Um, so oftentimes our tactics, you know, diverge and um, we come up with disagreements like this. He has to recognize that he is in this as a solid in solidarity with us, not with a with a with a Palestinians, with the Palestinians, not him dictating. He has to stand behind us, not even beside us. He has to stand behind us. People always ask me, like older people, so are, are, the, are the students scared to go to school? Are they hiding their yarmulkes? I'm like, people who don't wear yarmulkes are putting on yarmulkes. Jews are wearing their Magenda Vida outside, you know what I mean? Jews, on their way to class, they're gonna hang around the table for five, ten minutes. Like, this is what's amazing. It's that they're, it's their wake up call. The Hanukkah rally was about defiance. Okay, here in front of the lighting of the candle for the Festival of Lights. Please much come it. inside. Everybody is welcome. We're going to be uh, lighting a candelabra for the Jewish Festival of Lights. Just like, you know, many years ago, uh, Jews had resisted Greek imperialism, and that's why we had the holiday of Hanukkah, so it came together very well. The Maccabees of old were a group, a small group of people who were dedicated to religious freedom, who were dedicated to liberty. And if we lived in a world that was characterized by honesty and decency, we would all have the courage to recognize and support the modern day Maccabees. And we all know who they are. The those who are the people, if the people who are heckling in the back were honest to their proclaimed ideals, they would join us right now in a demonstration for democracy in Arab lands. We are the Roman Maccabees of today are the Christians in China. We are You're in this position where all of your people are on the other side and they're calling you a traitor and, a, and, and like no matter how much I believe in what I'm doing, like it, it just, you know, it, it, you know, when you have a, a lot of people in your face, you know, saying how, how they feel sorry for you and calling you names and shit, it, it hurts. It sucks to be so not liked. Hanukkah. I'm so proud to be a Jew.
see you on the show of I just want to remind you, as you're leaving now, the last thing that could make this Hanukkah wonderful, the one thing that could ruin it, is if anyone doesn't leave in the most peaceful, serene manner. We're all excited, we're all happy, and if we want to show that we're truly good Jews, if we want to be good Jews, we have to leave peacefully and calmly. Now, before you leave, before you leave, I'd like to lead everyone in the singing of the Israeli national anthem of the Jewish state. And I wish I both for the future of Hakifa. Growing up with Israel as a rock in my own identity, always as something as positive, as a positive influence, something to look to and say, see, Jews can accomplish something in the big chaotic world. Hearing speakers who rip to shreds things you value, um, it makes you feel as if family is getting beaten up, as if their reputation is getting attacked. You feel something you care about, a person, a place, it's getting defaced. Sam got arrested and then point that thing someplace else. He was standing outside of the university uh, on the sidewalk and uh, four or five police jumped him and uh, threw him on the sidewalk and now he's at the Guy station uh, just, uh, just, just by uh, Rennie Levesque. Um, they're going to be holding him till tomorrow morning. They've asked for a couple thousand dollars bail. So what was it being charged for? He's being charged for breaking his bail conditions from the ninth. Oh. Plan is for people to show up at, at the court tomorrow okay. to show their support. I'm looking at the numbers. Don't collect money. We're going to pay it as one block. It's okay, I have a hundred dollars. It's really, it's very scary. Why are they targeting Samir? Maybe because he talks, because he, you know, he's a free spirit actually. And um, they don't want him to talk. Maybe they want him to be silent. But he, not Samir. Samir wants to be silent. Never. I know my son. I'm so very proud of my son. He's actually defending his rights because uh, the Palestinians, they have the right to live a decent life in Palestine, See? like the rest of the people in this world. So, I don't know what's gonna happen. We were forced to leave Palestine. My parents were forced and my family uh, we have thousands of acres there, but now we cannot go back. But we still have the documents that this is our land. We still have the keys that this is our land. And we hope to go back, inshallah, one day. Police and told them, oh, there's no school and Samir is in the for school. For how long? This condition is for how long, anyway? I don't know. Oh. You have to ask Samir. It's indefinite. Why are you crying? Love you. <laughs> I love you, I love you, Mario. You're a great support, you know. <laughs> great job. <laughs> no, it's just the pressure, it's too much. It's uh, there's just no justice in the whole, the whole process. And this whole no, thing is no, just no, no. insane, constantly going after the, the, the people that really are powerless. Yeah. <laughs> what is this to do? You're just students, you know, yeah. What is it? yeah.
Well, it's like, but it's not about us, really. Well, they mentioned the back, we shut them down again. You Did you know her? Ingrid the front then? page. You saw the front page. No, it was good. That That's what most good. people are, are, have read. That's what I'm telling you. Most people have not opened this page. Yeah. I said, the big piece outside. It's not a great deal, but I'm going to tell you. I don't know. اه شو so we knew that it wasn't simply enough to have public demonstrations and to make noise about it, but we actually had to take concrete steps to undo the wrong that was done against us. For the first time since 1930s Austria, a Jewish student organization has been shut down. On Monday, December 2nd, near midnight, a motion was passed by the Concordia Student Union Council to shut down Concordia Hillel. The only then we Jewish took the CSU to court. We will be petitioning the court for the following. Punitive damages for the impingement upon the freedoms, liberties, and constitutional rights of Concordia's Jewish students and their association, Concordia Hillel. I think most um, people in the community figure uh, a Jewish kid should have a grounding in his his culture and his values, and with that, go into the the world and do what you have to do. So we're just like he all like you. I was seven, he was ten. I think it's time. So I guess we should take the car. <laughs> I think I grew up without worrying about anti-Semitism or war or the environment. I think our kids are growing up with a lot of very serious worries. Things at Concordia are just more public. I think that took the Jewish students by surprise. I think what this past year has shown to the Jewish students is that, well, you can be public too. The reason we're here today among other things, is to expressing yourselves, to speaking truth to power, and not breaking windows, to emphasize the point. I think a, a guy like Noah has learned that if that's what the culture requires, so that's the language that you speak in that culture. Hey, no. Yeah, we're next with you. You're going to set up? Yeah. OK. Go inside. I love this guy, man. I love this guy. This is like my, this is my hero. This is pretty sweet. Has it ever affected you emotionally to be called an anti-Semite or self-hating Jew? I mean, like, even if intellectually you can, uh, but even if it said, like, if it said so many times and with such force by seemingly people that, that may mean well. I guess probably, yeah, you know, maybe 35 years ago it did, yeah. but no, I no, don't really care. Uh, first of all, you know, this is just what happens when you're critical. I mean, if you shut up, you're okay. Uh, okay, that comes with turf. So what do you expect? Well, you've called um, anti-Arab racism the, like the last form of acceptable racism in the mainstream. Yeah, that's, that's been going on for a long time. I mean, when I was a child, uh, and in fact, graduate student, uh, anti-Semitism was legitimate. Mm -hmm. So at that point, anti-Semitism was just normal, you know. Uh, uh, I remember as a kid when, in the 30s, when my father finally got enough money to buy a car, we'd drive off for a weekend to the nearby mountains and uh, 
you had to look for the motels to see if they had restricted on them. The word restricted meant no Jews. I mean, no blacks, you know, you didn't even need a sign. <laughs> That's yeah. out of the question. But with regard to Arabs, it's, it's not concealed anymore than it was about Jews. And in fact, in the in depictions of Arabs, it's just standard. I mean, you go to a, a movies or you know, television or the media. I mean, Arabs are just uh, killers and murderers and so on and so forth. You want a terrorist, yeah, okay, make them look like an Arab. But it's good to be back. I'm, I'm actually, I, I didn't think I'd say this. When I left, I was pretty happy to be leaving for the break, but. Uh, and there's Sabine now. Hey, Sabine. Hey. Sorry I'm late. Oh. How you doing? Okay, you? Good, very good. I haven't seen this lawsuit. I'm looking forward to reading it. What do you think of the lawsuit? It's pretty um, illustrative of the general attitude and that they're suing us basically, I think, for being pro-Palestinian and for being left-wing. Which last time I checked isn't outlawed under Canadian law. I'm worried that it's gonna drag on and that it's gonna get ugly. And I think that they're doing this, they're trying to tie us up in court, make us spend a lot of money, slander us in the press as being anti-Semitic, just to defame us and teach people a lesson that if you criticize Israel, if you take it too far, then we're gonna take you out. So what, you're, you guys pretty much screwed when it comes to Hillel? Is that what you're saying? Well, we're screwed all over the place. So. Aaron, what do you think? Sabine's a pessimist. He's, I mean, in terms we're of that. We're not going to settle. No, of course not. Well, well, see, that's what I was telling Aaron yesterday. Like, Aaron thinks that if we apologize to them, they'll drop the lawsuit. No. No way. He even said. No way. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, have you seen the Asana? Uh, no, I think he went to. He's gone? Nobody knows where he is? For a long time, I only knew him through just reading his comment pieces. And I really resented him in many ways. And I thought, you know, oh, this guy's such a, you know, he's a racist, he's an apologist for atrocities and so forth. He's a, you know, a terrible person. First of all, I'm saying, when Chomsky used that quote, like, you often use the last name, that is uh, I'm uh, generalization. No, you always like to believe that the people who disagree with you politically are intolerant little bigots, <laughs> right? who are just full of rage and anger and don't listen and aren't interested in anything, you know, good. The first impression of Aaron Maté as a person was this little guy who was just pissed off at everything, a Chomsky and with a, a knack for writing. I just don't, I just don't, I mean, is this really about, like, like if we had banned... One thing that was confusing, this guy, Aaron, who was on the CSU, who was in a position of authority in the student government for a couple of years, yet did nothing to help the Jewish community on campus. What is his Jewishness worth? But unfortunately, because politically, these, like, these issues are very important to me, and I see them in a certain way, these are the people that I have to be on side with at this point, because I can't be on your side. But anyway, but anyway, but the point is, what was I said? The point is, this lawsuit, like, fuck. Is this really about 
how you guys are feeling at Hell Ellen and not what people in B'nai B'rith and, and Bergman are wanting to do. Because I actually don't sense that. And like, I, I don't want to be presumptuous, but that's... Have you spoken to people in Hell Ellen about the losses? Have a good night. I get the impression that Aaron is a politician. I'm sure that I have trouble seeing things that he does as anything else than a political strategy. So he can say what he wants to say. I'll invite him over to my house for Shabbat a thousand times. If he wants to be part of the community, any Jew who says they're a Jew should be able to come to my house. And my family will give them chicken soup. My mom will smile at them and ask them how it's going. Anyway, so, so, so think about what I said, like, you know, and... So, wait, what happened with Noah? He rejected my peace offer. offer. He said, I mean, he's, I mean, he was sort of into it. Like, if the CSU basically abandoned all of our political stances and we had no foreign policy, as he put it, then he'd be willing to discuss maybe dropping this lawsuit. But, I mean, whatever. Like, we're not going to, like, sit idly by and not take stances, especially if that's what we were elected on. I'm like, that's who we are, you know? So fuck it. We go to war. They started making fun of like whenever we rally, we sing Am Israel Chai, Am Israel Chai. So they were they started singing it. Yeah, they started singing it, make like Am Israel Chai. But you guys, your songs. You ever hear like a Palestinian folk song? It's like boom. No, yeah. We're coming to kill you. <laughs> Zionists. Song of jihad, not the Palestinian. Kill you. Songs, you know? <laughs> no, sing we'll a nice fun. one. You know some nice ones. No, no, no. Yeah, you. I, I, I don't know these songs. No, I don't listen to these songs. Yeah. You know. So that's my principle. No. Why? 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 Now, because I don't, don't believe like religious songs. No, it's not religious. I don't believe in suicide bombing and songs that I mean for yeah. violence. For sure, I don't believe in that. Yeah, I don't believe in that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So this is a song that we always sing in the speech our offices. <laughs> my country, my country, da da da. I want you are so to, beautiful. No, no, I want you to be a democracy and <laughs> secular and don't teach hate. Don't teach hate. To I the little you. little children and the miserable refugees. Don't teach hate in the school system. My country, my, my country. country. Once the Israelis pull out of the West Bank and Gaza, you shall have, you shall have very, very good ties with America and Canada. You shall have, you shall have. Can I see my country? We reject, we reject. Human rights abuses, human rights abuses. This is a PC person. Human rights abuses, human rights abuses. My country, <laughs> my I country. You. I love you, I love, love you, country. I love you, country. Palestine, Samra and I met in a propaganda class, actually, which is kind of interesting, considering everything that's happened since. But, uh, yeah, we, we actually met in Dennis Murphy's propaganda class and became friends through that. Personally, for me, growing up Jewish, but in a very secular household, reading things that Samra had written, hearing him speak, and not just Samra, I mean, a, sort of everything, the, the general atmosphere at Concordia prompted me to be actively interested in what was going on in the world. There's something for all people who have chosen to interact as human beings and not as representatives from their respective uh, backgrounds. There's just a, a place where you meet in the middle as members of the human race and not as a Jew and an Arab. On the other hand, from the outside world, it's been a huge problem. I have definitely felt from a lot of acquaintances a, an air of confusion at least, and sometimes of coldness and of um, a bitterness that um, 
I really find difficult to grasp, and it is hurtful. told me yesterday, I yeah. mean, that, that, you know, I thank you very much for calling me, yeah. uh, that you, uh, you had filed a complaint with the RCMP, mm. and I mentioned it. Two things. Um, first of all, the... the so what's up with Sam with these days? So Sam, well, I think he's feeling a, a mix of his, you know, his, his usual uh, egotistical, uh, grandiose, larger-than-life ways. Okay, I'm Samir El Atrash. Um, and I'm the vice president of communications with um, SP. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever. He, he gets on my nerves sometimes. You know? The more hoopla there is and the more tension, the more, the more people get rightly sick of it and then want to kick you out of office. Can West, Izzy Asper owned global television, has been developing plans for a documentary you know, about Concordia, you know. It's a general trend. It's a hot property in the entertainment world. And they've tapped Sam Trash as one of their main stars. But now, after getting wind of, um, you know, not just the company behind it, but the producer of the show, people are concerned. I think Sam is going through a crisis. It's gotta be tough. Like, <clears throat> on the one hand, you have the prospect of, like, this hour-long show all about you. I mean, I, I can relate because when I was doing the CBC thing last month or a few months ago. I was like, yeah, they're great. They're, you know, they're going to be so great to us. Of course they weren't. We'll have a bet. Like, you know, you, know, you think they're going to make my eyes look way bigger? I'll be like, <laughs> kill the Jews. <laughs> I don't think so. Summer Elatrash is the brains behind the offensive. He leads solidarity for Palestinian human rights. SPHR. It blew me out of my seat. When Summer and other activists say they want Israel wiped out, the vast majority of Jews take that as being anti-Jewish. It was like being uh, handled by, you know, a very sophisticated propaganda machine that just completely, you know, basically cut you up and then pinned you back um, in the shape that they wanted to pin you back in. All of a sudden, at like 2 o'clock in the morning, we received a frantic telephone call from Samra saying, I have to come over, I, I, I need to talk to people. I was, um, I think, in tears at the time. And um, I remember I felt so upset at the time that um, I asked Emily to break up with me um, because I thought that, like, you know, why should anybody have to be associated with me at this time? You know, obviously I doubted myself. I doubted my capabilities. I doubted whether, you know, um, I should be doing this type of thing. If you point out that there's three million people living under an occupation, I'll be portrayed as an anti-Semite. I'm not Italian, you know, I'm not um, from Iceland criticizing Israel. I'm a Palestinian. I'm directly affected by this issue. My parents are directly affected by this issue. It's hard. It's hard to open yourself in Concordia. It's hard to, you know, try to see the bad guys as not so bad, but the good guys as not so good. It's hard. And the scary thing is, no matter how open-minded you think you are, no matter how objective or how knowledgeable you think you are, you can never know if you're just, you know, always deluding yourself. You can never know for sure if you're just closed-minded still. This year ended with the elections to decide the new Concordia Student Union. There's been a lot of animosity towards the Concordia Student Union. People are tired of this school being political. 
street at Concordia. I pay like $1,500 a year. Yo, it's not too bad, but still, it could be cheaper or more freer. This is how we do. You can shit. Every year, it's the lefties versus the right wing slates. And every year, it's the lefties saying, you know, we're not as bad as, like, we're not the lefties. We're not, even though they really are. I did tell people to vote for evolution. I mean, the, the platform was students first, activism second. Because, I mean, it's not particularly a Jewish thing or a Halal thing, I think it's in the interest of all students. But because most students, they're tired of the, a certain clique running in the CSU. They put themselves up in the ivory tower, up on the sixth floor, created this tight-knit little clan of people who are holding power and like with this narrow political agenda and completely disenfranchised everybody. So everything that they hate, they've become. You disgraced my prophet, my prophet David. You disgraced Moses, my prophet. My prophet, I made her an the Israeli flag dishonors my prophet. You just said it has nothing to do with the whole occupation. The point is, 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 Like it's just, it's, it's come to the point where like, there's no right and wrong anymore. Everybody's calling each other racist. You're racist, no, you're racist. Oh, this guy's racist, this party's racist, these guys, everybody's racist, you know? Whatever. Who wants to go to school where everybody's racist? What do you guys think about the CSU? Oh, so bad. No tax, no comments. <laughs> Uh, well, to say the truth, I'm a little sick of uh, CSU <laughs> politics. To tell you the truth. I don't want to say anymore. I mean, they keep doing this, and I'm trying to get my education. Because uh, the situation here is worse than ever. It's a disaster. It's a personal failure in that we didn't explain to them that, look, I mean, the point is right now, to whatever extent we are involved in political activity, that's not a bad thing. Because we're all kids, you know? So to me, actually, in some ways, like the most childish and the biggest hindrances are those behind the scenes, the, the adults, the parents, the lobby groups, the commentators that have a huge role in informing opinion. Saying that, like, the reason like uh, we uh, failed is because we were not democratic enough. 
After we lost the elections, I think one reason why I didn't feel as terrible as I think I otherwise would have is because this feeling actually had been growing in me ever since we shot down Netanyahu. We immediately became very self-righteous and unwilling to take any responsibility for what happened that day. We became just wrapped up in squabbling with Halal and squabbling with the administration, and we became very self-involved. I gotta move on. I've been here for five years in the school, and there's life and a world beyond the CSU, you know, and the revolution will go on. How was the year? Ah, so. Sarah, like, Sarah ate two ducks, a couple of pigs' feet. I feel like an American tourist. Like, yeah. Looks like an American tourist. Yeah. I don't know. This is the face of America. Ten years. You know, though the Muslims. I have the new face of America. This is the new face of America. <laughs> We breed like rabbits.